Making news this hour, the latest on a West Side shooting that less has left a 15 year old dead. Plus, coronavirus deaths and cases per day in the U.S. have dropped over the past couple of weeks as President Biden sets a new goal for vaccinations. Outside with live cam, it's uh, almost a sleep with the windows open kind of morning. Nice and cool out there. Brisk feels drier. We'll talk to Mike Ostrich coming up. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is January 26th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, nice and pleasant this morning. Yeah, not bad at all. Mid 50s and uh, a nice break from the humidity and the mugginess, the fog, the drizzle. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties, so ignore the man behind the curtain. Ignore that little thing in the corner there. Okay. So yeah, we're actually cooler than that. It's our, our bug as we call it, the temperature. Okay. So yeah, we're down in the uh, the mid 40s right now here in town and got a lot of clear skies out there. That front moved through yesterday. We had some rain early on in the morning and uh, yeah, 46 degrees right now. 37 Bernie stage, some 30s on portions of the hill country. There's a little bit of a breeze out there and so there is a little bit of a wind chill to deal with. I think we dropped down a couple of more notches here in the next uh, couple of hours and then going to be a huge warm up throughout the day. Mold is really really, really heavy. Hopefully it goes down since we've dried out somewhat, but this is from that that drizzly weekend. Some of the rain yesterday up to uh, 11,500 mountain cedar is on the high side. It's going to be interesting to see what that number does in behind the front because it was uh, somewhat on the breezy side, of course, yesterday. So throughout the morning, I think we dropped down in the low 40s here in town again, a little bit of a wind chill to uh, to deal with and then a huge warm up. We gain 30 degrees basically throughout the day, 75, plenty of sunshine. Another front's going to move through later on tonight. Kind of a reality check back to normal and we stair step downward and then we're going to go right back up on the stairs going into the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Excuse me. Traffic authority right now and Samuel King. Anything going on, sir? Uh, good morning. Things uh, relatively quiet uh, on the roads this uh, morning, Mike, and let's take a look. There are a couple of uh, construction uh, related things uh, early this morning. There's a 35 northbound uh, exit ramp to 37 and 281 that is closed until five o'clock, so just about another half hour. Also at 281 and 1604, similar situation. The flyover ramps to 281 are closed uh, this week, or actually overnight all week uh, because of construction there. And let's take a look at Transkai 37 uh, looking uh, fine this morning, as does 281 at the quarry. Mark, Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Severe weather sleeping through parts of Alabama. The storm is suspected of producing a tornado that touched down last night. The National Weather Service Birmingham office confirmed the twister, calling it, quote, large and extremely dangerous, end quote. The tornado ripped through a hotel and tore off part of a church roof. Trees were uprooted. Power lines were downed and debris lined the streets. Officials in Jefferson County, Alabama, the hardest hit area, say search and rescue efforts are underway and that injuries range from minor to serious. Now to the latest on the pandemic and growing concerns about mutations of the coronavirus. A new variant of the virus has been found in the state of Minnesota. It comes as President Biden warns we could see 660,000 deaths in this country before we, quote, turn the corner. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the very latest. This morning, another mysterious variant of the coronavirus has arrived in the U.S. A mutation first discovered in Brazil has now been detected in Minnesota. The state health department says the case involves a resident with recent travel history to Brazil. Viruses change. That's that's what's known about viruses. That it's mutating is, is nothing new to science and nothing new to us. Doctors say the coronavirus has mutated thousands of times, but three variants are being closely watched. The Brazilian variant found in Minnesota is said to be more contagious than the more common strains, and a variant that originated in England now spreading in at least 26 states. Officials warn that strain could also be more deadly. They became convinced that it is in fact uh, a bit more a virulent, namely make, making it more difficult when you get to the point of serious disease and even death. Doctors say the vaccines do work against the variants, but they're also tracking a mutation from South Africa that could be tougher for Moderna vaccines to fight. So the company is working on a booster shot as a precaution. The South African variant has not been detected in the U.S., but the Biden administration is now banning non-citizens traveling from that country. In addition to Brazil, England, Ireland, and 26 countries across Europe. And beginning today, a negative COVID test or proof of recovery from the virus will be required for all air travelers arriving in the U.S. 
U.S. In the meantime, the race to vaccinate Americans is still inching along. President Biden is now aiming to ramp up to 1.5 million doses per day, and he's hoping for widespread vaccinations by spring. But one of his top advisors says we may not see that until the fall. I think this is going to take us uh, into the fall. We got to get there before next uh, winter. The Biden administration invoked the Defense Production Act to expand vaccine production. But this morning, the largest maker of syringes says it doesn't have the capacity to increase supplies. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. When it comes to coronavirus cases here at home, several progress indicators are improving or stabilizing for the first time in weeks. Here's a look at the positivity rate. It is down for a third straight week and stands at 15 percent this morning. The goal is to get that down to 5% or below. The seven-day average also dropping sits at 1,722. That's still pretty high for daily cases rates. Another 13 new deaths related to COVID-19 were confirmed last night. 1,402 COVID patients are being treated at area hospitals. 409 are in ICU. 263 are on ventilators. Tomorrow, we'll be taking an in-depth look into the science behind the COVID-19 vaccines, the struggles involved, and what they mean for the future. The Vaccines Ending the COVID-19 Pandemic airs tomorrow at 7 p.m. right here on KSET 12, KSET.com, and the KSET TV app. Tuesday morning, we're just getting started. It's 436, and Mike says it is 46 degrees. Yeah, a little chillier than we thought. And still ahead, a first look at an interview from a North Texas teenager who alerted the FBI that his father was taking part in the recent insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. Last night's Spurs game uh, gets postponed because of COVID-19 related issues. We have details on what's next for the silver and black. And taking a look outside with live cam. So we're in the 40s, almost 50 there. Uh, but we're going to check in with Mike. He says to expect some sun today. We'll be right back. New this morning, a 15-year-old shot late last night at a West Side home. Police were called out to the 500 block of Bell Cross. Our Sarah Costa is live in KSAT Studio B with an update on that teenager's condition. Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Yeah, I just spoke with the medical examiner's office who confirmed with me that that 15 year old died overnight from his injuries. San Antonio police say they were called out to a robbery at the home in the 500 block of Bell Cross, but they are unsure if the incident was actually a robbery at all. According to police, a 19 year old who lives at the house says 15 year old, a 15 year old was shot trying to rob him. Witnesses say they heard two gunshots come from the home's front yard. The parents of the 19 year old are refusing to cooperate with police. Investigators are now seeking a search warrant to enter the home. Police say they hope video surveillance from the home will help solve this case. The 19 year old says he did not know the teen before the shooting. At this point, they are unsure if the shooter will face any charges related to the shooting. Back to you guys. A charge to that Senate that former President Donald Trump incited insurrection in a speech to supporters before the deadly attack on the Capitol. The move has set in motion his second impeachment trial. Ten House Republicans joined Democrats in voting to impeach Trump on January 13th, but Senate Democrats will need the support of 17 Republicans to convict him in the evenly divided chamber. The Senate is expected to start the trial on February 9th, which could result in Trump's disqualification from ever again serving as president. A multi-million dollar fund is being set up for victims of Harvey Weinstein. It's part of a Weinstein company liquidation plan approved by a U.S. bankruptcy judge. The plan allocates more than $17 million for sexual harassment and assault victims of Weinstein, uh, a sexual misconduct claims fund, and a liquidation trust would handle all the payments. Weinstein serving a prison sentence of 23 years for criminal sex acts and rape, still facing six more sex assault charges in Los Angeles. The former Hollywood producer has denied any wrongdoing. Well, less than an hour and a half before tip-off last night, the NBA announced the Spurs game in New Orleans against the Pelicans was postponed due to COVID-19 health and safety protocols. This is the first Spurs game to be postponed during the pandemic. It comes just hours after the Silver and Black faced off against the Washington Wizards, who were playing their first game back on Sunday after being shut down by the league since January 11th due to coronavirus concerns. 
Reason given for last night's postponement is testing and contact tracing that did not allow for both the Spurs and Pelicans to field the required eight players for last night's game. We now wait to see how many more Spurs games could be affected going forward. They have three more scheduled this week at home tomorrow at the Celt. Uh, sorry, tomorrow versus the Celtics 730. Friday uh, against Denver, and then they take on the Memphis Grizzlies. But this kind of upends everything right now. I'd say this is a pretty fluid situation. Oh, it definitely is. Well, we hope to see them on the court soon. We will keep you posted, Spurs fans. That's right. Go Spurs, go. Time now is 442 and about in your 40s for right now. Still ahead, hospitals have been using ultraviolet light for years to disinfect. But can products with the same technology actually kill the coronavirus? Also next, hear from a Dallas teen who turned in his father who was allegedly taking part in the riots at the U.S. Capitol building. And welcome back. It is 445. A Texas teenager talking about why he turned in his father for taking part in the deadly riot on Capitol Hill. ABC's TJ Holmes has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a family divided over the January 6th Capitol riot. It was all over the news. You could see him, his blue coat, his helmet. This man is Guy Raffitt, caught on camera taking part in the siege against the Capitol. His son, 18-year-old Jackson Raffitt, says he was getting real-time updates from his dad during the insurrection. And this morning on GMA, ABC's TJ Holmes goes one-on-one -on -one with Jackson Raffitt. So why, why be public about it? I want people to know how awful this political strain can be on certain people. It can manipulate and warp and change a person's thoughts over a course of two years. It can twist a whole family to being completely against each other. We'll have much more on that interview, plus the latest on the investigation like into Raffa's father, coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Well, hospitals have been using ultraviolet light to sanitize surfaces for a long time. What about other products you can buy to use at home? And are those products effective at killing the new coronavirus? 12 on your size, Marilyn Morris, with what you should know before you buy. It's not new. Ultraviolet light has been used for years in hospitals to inactivate or kill germs. And now you're seeing that same technology in gadgets for sale at stores. UV light has been shown to kill many bacteria and viruses, and that may very well include the new coronavirus, though the FDA says data is limited. The thing about ultraviolet is it's of sufficient energy to cause damage to cells, DNA, and other biological material, which makes it a very powerful disinfectant against viruses and bacteria. Most UV lights, wands, or boxes you see for sale are UVC. But before you buy, Consumer Reports says no, there are limitations. The light needs direct exposure to the surface to kill coronavirus. If dust, dirt, or small crevices block the beam, the UV light may not be fully effective. Also, many UV lamps sold for home use are low dose, so it may take longer exposure to potentially inactivate a virus. Waving the light quickly over your countertops likely will not be enough. And there are safety concerns. UV rays can burn the eyes and skin. Some devices turn off when opened, but if you own a product with an exposed UV lamp, never look directly at the light. Bottom line, while UV lights can kill viruses, experts say there are less expensive ways to do it, and it is no substitute for washing your hands. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. 448, you know what that means. All right, let's try to check in with our morning commute with our Samuel King. Good morning. Good morning, Stephanie and Mark. Sometimes the simplest advice is the best advice. And the advice to you this morning is you have plenty of time uh, to head out. If you need to head out early this morning, things looking pretty good on the roads. Let's take a look at uh, Bandera Road and Tide 1604 to 410, 11 minutes from 410 to 1604. So not too much of a delay at this hour. And let's take a look at Transguide uh, 35 at uh, New Braunfels. Looking fine this morning as does 35 at loop 410. Thank you, Samuel. Uh, something's got a little mic choked up right there. Is something yeah. sentimental? <laughs> no, all of a sudden you get that little tickle in your throat. <laughs> yeah. So if I start having a little cough attack, it's, it's yeah. that. I, I just, we didn't know if you took the picture and it was harking you know, back to some memories. <laughs> or... I love the picture behind me. The yeah. caption, though, when I read it the second time, yeah. it's like you could have left that part out that says soaking up the great weather 
before the dog days of summer. Did you have oh, to mention summer? Oh, yeah, I didn't read that part. Just I because. Woodlawn Lake. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, Taylor hasn't taken a picture in a while, but always takes great pictures there of uh, Woodlawn Lake, and that's gorgeous. Very nice. So mm -hmm. pretty. Thank All you. All that's mi missing is the nature noises. <laughs> Thank you for the sound effect, Stephanie. Uh, oh yeah. We have uh, clear skies. <laughs> it's gonna be. <laughs> it's gonna be fantastic uh, sunrise today. There's the uh, the moon going down, and it's going to be full on. What's today? 26, 27, uh, Thursday is the, the day of the full moon. So beautiful view out there. Obviously got a lot of clear skies and a little bit of a breeze coming in here out of the north to northeast, uh, five, 10 miles per hour, but just enough to add that little kind of bite to some of these temperatures. So it feels like 42 here in town and not much of a wind chill out in the hill country, just in the uh, mid to upper 30s. And I think we do drop down a little bit in the next couple of hours. All right, you step outside. It is much, much, much more refreshing than yesterday when we had those dew point temperatures that were well up into the 60s. It felt like late spring, early summer, and now in the past 24 hours, uh, the dew points, the measure moisture in the atmosphere have dropped down a good 25, 30, close to 35 degrees after that front moved on through here. So yeah, it's much more comfortable. And with the dry air, it doesn't hold the heat in as well, heats up very easily than moist air does. So therefore we see about a 30 plus degree rise in temperatures throughout the day. And as far as humidity, as going into this evening, it's gonna try to come up just a little bit, but we have another front moving on through here. Now this is not gonna be a blast of cold air immediately in behind it. It will be sort of a reality check and gets it back down to normal tomorrow, mid sixties roughly. Then we get the secondary surge of cool air coming in here on Thursday and that's when we're gonna see our coldest temperatures. So that's when we bottom out and that won't last long because it's just gonna bounce right back as we go in toward the, uh, the weekend. So nothing going on out there and big storm system off to the uh, west of us, but that's gonna kind of take a northeastwardly path and so it's going to be avoiding anything. We don't have any rain in the forecast unfortunately over the uh, next uh, couple of days or next week at least and as we talked about in the news earlier there was the uh, front same front that moved through here touched off severe weather there and the uh, potential tornado in northern Alabama so that's going to continue off to the east maybe some stronger storms in the uh, far southeastern portion of the country later on today. All right 70 today at noon already uh, more than five above normal plenty of sunshine out there good looking day 75 for high temperature and then tomorrow in behind this first or this next front, I should say the first kind of push of cooler air. We get down to 65 for a high temperature. Another cool morning, then secondary surge and down to 38 on Thursday morning, 58 for a high temperature. That's it. Then we spring right back mid 70s by Saturday. Another weak front moves on through here and back down to reality by Monday. I was telling Steph before the newscast, I had no excuse yesterday. The weather was so nice. I had to do the yard work I've been putting off for weeks. Yeah, it's funny because I was outside and looking and it's like, wow, I may have to cut the grass. It's like mm -hmm. we've had a little bit of rain lately. It's yeah. nice to see. Yeah, and I just know. enough, I had to pull the weeds too. I noticed a lot of our neighbors also outside. Mm -hmm. My mom cleaning her car. Yeah, we're all out trying to get everything done while the weather's nice. The cacophony of lawnmowers and edgers and trimmers. <laughs> and we've got a brush pickup coming up. That reminds me, of. guess what I'm going to be doing. Oh, okay. nice. Trimming leaves. And yes, you are. 453 right now, hovering around 46 degrees. And coming up next, a major movie star showing off his COVID-19 vaccination, plus a look at some of the top films of 2020. But uh, since Steph's back today, we're going to do all these lottery numbers, and I'll, I'll even take care of them for you. Oh, yeah. Nice. Special treat. Pick three, 072, Fireball 4, Daily 4, 8442, Fireball 3, Cash 5, 821, 27, 30, 33, Texas 2 Step. 4, 20, 24, 29, with a bonus ball of 27. All right, that didn't work. You look bored. No, it was great. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson is saying enough is enough when it comes to the coronavirus. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Rena Roy. Samuel L. Jackson took to Instagram to let his fans know that he had been vaccinated against COVID-19. The 72-year-old actor posted a pair of pictures of himself over the weekend at the vaccination center at the Forum in Inglewood, California. Jackson is seen wearing an Avengers-themed face mask, which features a cartoon version of Nick Fury, who the actor portrayed in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. His caption, at the Forum, getting that first jab. 
I was born to play. The American Film Institute announced its top 10 films of 2020. The list includes the jazz-themed animated feature Soul and two of Chadwick Boseman's final films. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom and Spike Lee's Vietnam drama Defy Bloods. We've been dying for this country from the bad kids. Both of Bozeman's movies are available on Netflix. Soul streams on Disney+. Plus. Don't miss out on the joys of life. And celebrating birthdays today, comedian and talk show host Ellen DeGeneres turned 63 today, and hockey great Wayne Gretzky is 60. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Wow, 60? Is that what she said? I heard right. Okay. You did. Happy Mr. birthday. That's key. <laughs> 458, we're at 46 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, a look at what's next in former President Trump's impeachment proceedings in the Senate. Plus, Twitter showing off a new feature meant to bolster its efforts to combat misinformation. We have more on that coming up in Tech Bytes. Live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The next step in a historic Senate impeachment trial begins today. I'm Alex Boucher in Washington. I'll have details coming up. Mid 40s out there. Uh, as a matter of fact, Mike says temperature just went up one degree. We will be checking in with him in a moment. Get an update to see how perfect our Tuesday is going to be. Weather-wise, good morning. It is Tuesday, the 26th of January. Thank you for joining us this morning. I like the way you described that. Perfect. It was almost perfect yesterday. Well, I'm assuming that the trend of what we saw yesterday might continue into today, Mike? Yeah, difference being, I mean, much cooler start this morning, but we've got some very, very dry air out there, so it's going to warm up uh, back up into the mid-70s like we were yesterday, and uh, then that's going to be changing temporarily 47 right now and uh, look at that bottom number that's about 30 degrees lower than it was at this time the dew point and therefore the humidity is nowhere near what it was like I said it's very pleasant out there and look at that rise in temperatures throughout the day and so by mid afternoon we're going to be again well up into the uh, mid 70s as far as the aquifer it did Dropped down one tenth of a foot in the past 24 hours yesterday's reading and the allergens mold really shot up. Hopefully that's lower today, given the fact we got some drier air in here after that kind of uh, just damp weekend and damp yesterday starting off mountain cedars on the high side. And it's going to be interesting to see what that does when the updated count comes out, given the fact we had a breezy day yesterday. Speaking of breeze, there's a little bit of a wind out there, not much, but just enough to add that uh, little nip to some of these temperatures. So 47 feels like 44 here in town. 42 is the wind chill at Randolph. Not too bad, but again, just that little oomph to these uh, temperatures. And so sunny, warm again, mid 70s, very spring like out there. Then mostly sunny tomorrow, a bit cooler. We have a front moving through later on tonight. It's not going to be a huge Arctic blast, just kind of puts us back down to normal readings. Then the the secondary surge of cool air comes in here, so it is going to be cold on Thursday, mid 50s for high temperatures, and we'll be starting off in the 30s. Then back to the 70s by the weekend. Unfortunately, not a drop of rain in sight, but pretty nice weather despite that. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. Anything, map looks clear, anything going on? Uh, map does uh, look clear, not seeing any reports of any uh, crashes or anything and some of the construction we had earlier is starting to warm up, so that's all good news there. Let's take a look at uh, 151. They had some construction recently there, right there at 410, but you can see the drive times between 90 and 1604, nine minutes each way. Looking at some other travel times from across the region, 25 minutes if you're coming in from the Bernie area into downtown San Antonio, 26 minutes uh, from New Braunfels on 35, 10 minutes on I-10 or 30 minutes on I-10 from uh, Seguin and 29 minutes from the south if you're coming in from the Pleasanton area. And here's a look at Transkai 35 at uh, New Braunfels Avenue looking uh, fine this morning, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Late breaking news now. Shots fired in the middle of the night. And the morning off to a busy start for SAPD detectives. They have an investigation going on at an apartment complex in the 800 block of Darby near Couples Road. Our Katrina Weber is there now with a live report. Now, Katrina, how did this happen? Well, good morning, Stephanie. According to police, a man about 25 years old was shot during some sort of a disagreement with another man. It happened in this building behind me in a second floor apartment. The police still have an active investigation going on looking for the shooter, but uh, the scene just uh, was active until just about 10 minutes ago. Let me give you a look at the video from earlier this morning. Police got the call here to the Darby Square Apartments around 3.30 this morning. They say they found a man, again, around 25 years old. 
He had been shot at least a couple of times in his leg and upper body. The police say he was in critical condition as he was rushed to a hospital. They are still looking for the shooter. According to uh, what we've been told, that person took off in a car with a woman. Uh, they described it as a gray BMW. And police have a description also of the man, a pretty vague description for what they've shared with us. Uh, but they uh, are looking actively for that person uh, who shot another man here at this apartment complex this morning. Reporting live on the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Today, the U.S. Senate moving forward with the next big step in former President Trump's second impeachment trial. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest from Washington. Overnight, a historic march across the Capitol. Members of the Senate, I announce the presence of the managers on the part of the House of Representatives. The House delivering the article of impeachment to the Senate. It triggers the start of the second impeachment trial against former President Donald Trump. President Trump gravely endangered the security of the United States and its institutions of government. Donald John Trump thus warrants impeachment and trial. Lead House impeachment from manager office Congressman office Jamie Raskin reading that single article of impeachment from the same chamber of violent mob storm nearly three weeks ago. Charging Trump with incitement of insurrection and demanding that he be held accountable for his words. Fight like hell. Democrats plan to argue this rally was part of a larger effort to subvert and obstruct the results of the 2020 election. He has not demonstrated remorse. He has not even acknowledged his role in the events of January 6th. And he has never disavowed the lies that were fed to the American people by him about who actually won the election. Both sides will have two weeks to prepare their case. The trial begins the week of February 8th. And overnight, President Biden told CNN he believes the trial has to happen, but he casts doubt on whether Democrats will have the support of the minimum 17 Republicans needed to convict. Already, a growing number say since Trump is out of office, the trial should be tossed out too. To Senator convict. Tom Cotton telling Fox. This is beyond the constitutional authority of the Senate to conduct a trial to convict and remove from office a man who left office last week. The Constitution says the chief justice presides over the impeachment trial of a president. But since Donald Trump is no longer in office, Senator Patrick Leahy, the Senate's longest serving Democrat, will oversee the proceedings. He's promised to be impartial. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. A San Antonio man that was seen amid the Capitol chaos on January 6th is scheduled to make a second court appearance today. Matthew Carl Mazzocco made his first federal court appearance last Tuesday. Our Sarah Costa is live in Studio B with what we know about his case. Sarah. Good morning, guys. Well, federal documents show that Matthew Mazzocco was identified as being at the Capitol on January 6th after a call came into FBI a day later. This Facebook post is one piece of evidence in the hands of prosecutors. The picture has the caption, quote, the Capitol is ours, end quote. Investigators say someone called the FBI after seeing this picture on Facebook. A criminal complaint also mentions another person who called the FBI linking Mazzocco to the Capitol on January 6th. Investigators also spoke with someone who worked with him at CMG Financial for more than three years. He faces several charges, including violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds. Now, the judge agreed to release him from jail until his trial on certain conditions, including that restricting travel outside of the U.S. and to Washington, D.C. He could face fines up to $25,000 if he doesn't show up to his court hearings. Back, back to you guys. Thank you, Sarah. More traffic authority coverage now. A flood control project is causing some long-term detours in one San Antonio neighborhood. McCullough Avenue is closed between Oblate and Shannon Lee Street. Our Samuel King joins us now. Now, Samuel, how long is this closure going to take place? Well, Stephanie Mark, for several weeks at least, they're trying to deal with some extensive uh, flood issues in the area and reduce those flood issues, actually. Now, crews started work on phase two of the Barber Drive drainage project just about three weeks ago. They have to open up the ground and dig and replace some storm drain boxes that will add capacity for better drainage in the area. Now this uh, part of town has flooded pretty severely over the years, so city officials say it takes a pretty large project to make things better. Anytime we do a construction project that requires us to close a road, we understand that uh, drivers, 
and even residents will be inconvenienced and it can be frustrating. Uh, so that's why we try to do these things as quickly as we can, as efficiently as we can, and as correct as we can. And Barry says they already plan to make changes to the detour to make it a little easier for drivers, ending it at Sharon Drive instead of Shannon Lee Street, where it is right now. Now, the work is paid for with proceeds from the 2017 bond issue, and this particular project runs about $8 million. Now, the project is expected to run through the spring, and while there may be some extra cleanup work after that point, officials don't expect any major closures in that part of town after that. Mark, Stephanie? Thank you, Samuel. Time now, it's 510 and 48 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, a first look at Twitter's new feature meant to help stop uh, help in the battle against misinformation. Plus, McDonald's is bringing back a fan favorite menu item. Hmm, that's that, coming up. That's it? That's all we get? <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, what is it? <laughs> all the teas for a reason, though, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But it got us, the it anchors, did. too. So it's really, really good. Outside with Live Cam, really nice morning out there. Mike says we're at 47 right now. We'll keep you updated on that temperature all morning. And welcome back. It's 514. In your morning consumer headlines, Apple is warning customers that its new iPhone 12 could interfere with certain medical devices, including pacemakers. The notice published on Apple's support page specifically warns users about magnets inside all four iPhone 12 models, as well as MagSafe charging accessories. In the update, Apple said it recommends keeping iPhones and MagSafe chargers a safe distance away from medical devices. It defines that as more than six inches apart or 15 inches apart when wirelessly charging. Apple says you, could, you should also avoid placing credit cards, security badges, passports, or key fobs between your phone and your MagSafe charger. After first appearing on the menu in September, McDonald's is bringing back its spicy chicken McNuggets for another limited run. The fast food giant says they're spiced with a blend of aged cayenne and chili pepper. The first new type of McNugget since they debuted back in 1983. The spicy version comes in 6, 10, 20, and 40 piece options at participating locations go get your spice on i guess is this wrong i thought they were still there i didn't know they were gone <laughs> i don't know but now we know now we know now we can plan our meals there you go with that 40 count <laughs> 515 49 degrees time now is 515 yes still ahead how twitter is making it easier to spot misinformation on its social media service plus how instagram is making it easier for businesses to use its platform I'm still discovering what's next and still going for my best, even though I live with a higher risk of stroke due to AFib, not caused by a heart valve problem. So if there's a better treatment than warfarin, I'm reaching for that. Eliquis. Eliquis is proven to reduce stroke risk better than warfarin, plus has significantly less major bleeding than warfarin. Eliquis is FDA approved and has both. What's next? I'm on board. Don't stop taking Eliquis unless your doctor tells you to, as stopping increases your risk of having a stroke. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart valve or abnormal bleeding. While taking Eliquis, you may bruise more easily, and it may take longer than usual for any bleeding to stop. Seek immediate medical care for sudden signs of bleeding, like unusual bruising. Eliquis may increase your bleeding risk if you take certain medicines. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. Ask your doctor about Eliquis. And if your ability to afford your medication has changed, we want to help. In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter unveils a new plan to stop the spread of misinformation. The pilot program called Birdwatch will rely on select users to flag and add notes to any tweets deemed false or misleading. Twitter says the fact checkers will be both experts and non-experts. And Instagram has a new feature for businesses and creators. The app's business tools are now centralized with a professional dashboard. It allows businesses to track their ads and set up shopping features in one place. And the magic of Harry Potter may be streaming soon. A live action series about the boy wizard is reportedly in the works for HBO Max. Eight Potter films were released between 2001 and 2011. Officials with HBO Max and Warner Brothers are staying mum, denying the reports. Those are Tech Bites. Have a great day. A Harry Potter series, future series on HBO Max. I think it'll do well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. Let's check on traffic right now. Samuel King is standing by with the latest at 519. What's the latest? 
Well, things uh, still looking uh, pretty good out there in the roads. You have plenty of time to uh, head out and about at this hour. We do have again construction. This is on I-10 West at Lock and Terra Road uh, doing some work out there between 9 and 3 this afternoon. So something to watch out for there. But if you're coming in on I-10 or heading out to uh, Bernie, 25 minutes from downtown San Antonio to Bernie. So that looks good. And then inside 1604, uh, 12, 13 minutes each way, which is uh, pretty typical for this time of day. And here's Transguide uh, 410 at Pair and Vital. Uh, things looking good there. And uh, 1604 at Bandera Road also looking fine at this hour, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Birds of a feather. Walk mm -hmm. together at Brackenridge Park, apparently. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> were out enjoying beautiful weather and, you know, enjoying some of the, the wonderful parks and all the sights and sounds and views out there and getting some sun out there at Brackenridge Park. Uh, any ornithologists in the room? It's a uh, you ask every once in a while, and until we get one on staff, I'm, we're going to be kind of. Let's go. Is that, an, is that an egret? Yeah, I think so. Samuel, any guess? That's my guess. No. Just because they're known to yeah. hang out oh. there at Brackenridge Park. Well. It's uh, oh, it's North Americanus unknownus. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with Mark. Sounds like, sounds like, remember the captions on Bugs Bunny cartoons mm -hmm. with the coyote and the roadrunner? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yes. all right, there is the moon. It is gorgeous out there off to the uh, west. It is going to be full in the next couple of days, but beautiful. We'll continue to watch that set. And then on the opposite side of things, we're going to have a beautiful sunrise later on this morning because of all this dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. So here's uh, some of the clouds that we had yesterday. And uh, when you get this darker shade of gray, in the uh, water vapor imagery, which is kind of mid upper levels of the atmosphere. That means you're going to have some beautiful blue skies out there, and that's what's in store for today. And then air is dry upstairs, air is dry down here at the surface, and that's going to remain the case tomorrow. We get sort of a, another front moving on through here. Of course, we had the front move through yesterday. That really dried things out, and then sort of a secondary shove of drier air and also cooler air. So we'll still be very warm today, a little cooler tomorrow, cooler still almost cold, only uh, kind of mid to upper 50s on Thursday. Now, the humidity is going to start to work its way back in here Friday and Saturday, so it's not going to be really as chilly in the morning. And then we have another front that's going to move on through here into Sunday, and so that's just going to scour out some of that humidity. A lot of times we get some of this humidity coming back in here. You get a straight shower or two to try and pop up, but it just doesn't look like there's anything to really kind of trigger that going on in the next uh, four, five, six days at least. So nothing out there on the satellite picture right now and around the country. Big storms, severe storms, uh, tornado producing storms up around Birmingham, Alabama yesterday. Big snowstorm off to the uh, north around the Great Lakes. That system off there to the west of us is going to sort of move to the north, where it's going to kind of work its way up to the northeast. And so that's going to be avoiding us. So we've got a great stretch of weather in here. Temperatures are going to do a little bit of a little bit of a roller coaster action over the next couple of days. 70, mostly sunny skies today at noon. So jacket this morning, you won't need it by about noontime. 75 later on. So we're going to be about 10, in some cases almost 15 degrees above normal. 48 tomorrow, so another cool morning. And then only, I say only 65, that's the normal high temperature roughly. Then we get that next kind of little push of cooler air. So 58 on Thursday, but then just stair step back up 75 on Saturday, a little bit cooler Sunday and Monday. Back to my guess on the bird. I'm going to think it's a, a heron or an egret, egret or something like oh, that. Oh, hey, I forgot okay. about heron. So. Yeah, so that that's kind of the, the species group I'm going to go with. I think Mark's right. That's what we usually see at Brackenridge Park mm -hmm. right there by Herons, the egrets. playground. Egret. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's right, what we'll go with. So we're going to stick with that wild guess. Yes. We know that if we're wrong, that you'll let us know. Please Five, do. <laughs> 523, we're at, is that, what's the current time? My uh, 40, 47. Thank you. Okay. I, wanna, I wanted to make sure we were right. Very good. Coming up next in your morning spotlight, how teachers can get a free copy of an award-winning environmental documentary for use in the classroom. An award-winning environmental documentary now available for teachers to use nationwide. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. This is the story of a simple solution, a way to heal our planet. 
solutions right under our feet. And it's as old as dirt. Schools teaching about the environment have a new resource. The producers of the award-winning documentary Kiss the Ground are making a 45-minute version and a supplemental curriculum free for educators. Schools can also get a free DVD with the shorter education cut and the original 84-minute version of the EcoDoc by going to kissthegroundmovie.com. It's a lot of debate about how long Niles and Sarah have been stuck there at any given time. Streaming services are taking a page from the DVD Extras playbook. Hulu viewers can now watch last year's hit Palm Springs with commentary by stars Andy Samberg and Kristen Milioti, plus the film's director and screenwriter. Rewatching this way is particularly appropriate for this film, which, after all, is about endlessly repeating the same day. In Hollywood, as always, I'm David Daniel. It's exactly 528, and the updated temperature for you is 47 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, as the COVID-19 stricken economy struggles, President Biden is pushing for a bipartisan agreement on his stimulus deal. Plus, we're taking a look at some of the most fascinating little-known pieces of San Antonio's black history. Plus, how many trampolines can be the key to jump-starting your workout routine for 2021. Hi, good morning. It is Tuesday, January 26th. Thanks for joining us today. And it's quite a bit more crisp out there weather-wise. 47 degrees at last check. Here's Mike with an update on how the rest of the day is shaping up. It's going to be beautiful today. It's going to be beautiful. It is beautiful right now. And there is the moon as it, it's uh, just about to set over there in the western sky. Two days away from being full and absolutely gorgeous. On the flip side of things, of course, we're going to see a spectacular sunrise today. And lots of sunshine all day long. 47 degrees. Humidity, dew point. Remember yesterday, this was about uh, 30 degrees higher, right around mid 60s. So that front moved through yesterday. It got rid of all the humidity and really made for some delightful weather. And then that dryer really warmed up quickly, made it up into to 77 yesterday. We're going to be up in the mid 70s again today and a little bit of a wind chill to deal with. Not bad, but you know, just knock a degree or two off here and there. It feels like 41 in Honda. We've got temperatures in the uh, mid 30s out in portions of the hill country. Mold really high. Mountain cedar is just on the high side now. Hopefully that number goes down since we've got some drier air in here. Of course, the updated count's going to come out in about the hour and a half, two hours. And then Mountain Cedar, going to be interesting to see what that does, given the fact it was kind of on the breezy side yesterday. 70 at noon today, 75 for a high temperature and a little bit of a breeze there out of the southeast. Tomorrow, we're going to kind of stair step, take a couple steps down, and then start taking a couple of steps back up as far as temperatures, high temperatures, the next few days going in toward the weekend. I'll explain coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, and I don't want to jinx it, but <laughs> been quiet out there? Oh, uh, uh-oh. You said it, Mike, but we'll see if that continues. But uh, you're right. Things have been looking uh, pretty good. Not much yellow or orange uh, on the map. We actually had to uh, travel out to the hill country to uh, find any uh, bit of a delay. This is between Kendall, uh, between uh, Kerr County and the Kendall County line between Kerrville and Comfort. Uh, this was down to about 30 something miles per hour, but that situa even that situation is improving. So if you're someone who heads uh, south on I-10 from out there, just a little something to watch out for near the county line. Uh, here's a look at some travel times. Uh, once you get to Bernie down to downtown San Antonio and I-10, 25 minutes uh, nine, uh, on 90, 20 minutes from Castroville into uh, San Antonio and 25 minutes from New Braunfels on 35 into downtown this morning. And here's a look uh, at Transguide. Things looking well. I-10 uh, at the Y. Things picking up, but so far so good. Stephanie? Thank you, Samuel. New this morning, San Antonio police say angry words led to physical violence and a shooting overnight. A man in his 20s is in the hospital while another one is on the run. It happened at an apartment complex in the 800 block of Darby near Couples Road. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, Katrina, do police know the reason for the argument? Well, they haven't shared that information with me, but what they did say is there was an argument in a second floor apartment right in this building here. It led to the shooting, which happened right outside that apartment. Now, police were all over this apartment complex. As you can see, uh, as you will see in the video, this started about 3.30 this morning. And that's when police got the call. They say that there had been an argument involving two men inside an apartment here at the Darby Square Apartments, a second floor unit. Uh, that then led to the shooting. 
The victim, they say, was hit at least a couple of times in his leg and upper body. He was in critical condition when he was taken to the hospital. The suspect, meanwhile, took off, and police uh, say that he was in the company of a woman as he left in what was described as a gray BMW. They were still looking for that person, the last word we heard from them. But again, the victim in the hospital in critical condition. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you for the update, Katrina. President Joe Biden expected to announce an economic recovery plan during next month's address to a joint session of Congress. No word on what the final price tag will be, but the president says it will feature historic investments. CNN's John Lawrence has more details. The Biden administration is trying to boost a struggling U.S. economy battered by the COVID-19 pandemic. There are tens of millions of Americans who are really on the economic precipice. Uh, there are thousands of businesses, particularly restaurants, who are on the verge of going out of business. President Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief plan earmarks funds for things like stimulus checks, housing assistance, and increased unemployment benefits. I don't expect we'll know whether we have an agreement and to what extent the entire package will be able to pass or not pass until we get right down to the very end of this process. While some Democrats Democrats favor a pricier proposal. Some Republicans want to tighten the purse strings, including Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, who says he's against another round of stimulus checks. Any further action should be smart and targeted, not just an imprecise deluge of borrowed money that would direct huge sums toward those who don't need it. As the talks go back and forth, the Biden administration is hoping for a bipartisan agreement. Democrats and Republicans can engage and give their input and feedback on what they think is going to work and how to move this package forward. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The U.S. Senate has confirmed Janet Yellen as the first woman to serve as Secretary of the Treasury. 84 senators voted to confirm Yellen, with 15 voting no. The Senate Finance Committee approved her nomination unanimously last week. During that process, Yellen told senators, with interest rates at historic lows, the smartest thing we can do is act Big, end quote. Her first order of business will be shepherding President Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan through Congress. Yellen says getting the nation through the pandemic takes precedence over addressing deficit or tax issues. Thousands of U.S. troops could help distribute COVID-19 vaccines here in the U.S. So four sources say that's an option the Defense Department is considering to help meet President Biden's vaccination goal. Sources say a plan could be unveiled later this week, but the strategy is not yet entirely decided. One notes as many as 10,000 people could be deployed. It's unclear if active duty troops, National Guard, or both could help. That deployment could involve medical units that have been on standby. President Biden wants to work up to a vaccination rate of 1.5 million doses a day. We've all heard money can't buy happiness, but maybe that's not true. A new study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences found that one's well-being appears to grow with their paycheck. Previously, it was believed that well-being did not increase if you were making more than $75,000 a year, but that was based on people's evaluation of their lives after reflection. In this study, researchers looked at how people were feeling during the moments of life. They used more than 1 million real-time reports from 33,000 U.S. adults and found that as income increased, so did well-being. 538, 47 degrees. And still ahead, a closer look at San Antonio's hidden black history and the importance of teaching it to the next generation. More than 60 million Americans dealing with the effects of a major winter storm. We'll take a closer look right here on GMSA. And taking a look outside with live cam, a chilly 49 degrees for now. We're going to check in later with Mike about all that sunshine we're going to get today. 541, welcome back. Right now it's estimated more than 60 million people across the U.S. are under winter weather alerts. Two major storm systems are taking shape and are expected to spawn historic snowfall rates and relentless rain. CNN's Daryl Forges has the latest. As you can see behind me, these, you know, the power lines, you have to make sure that you have a clear distance from them. Fire, then ice. A dangerous battle with the elements for firefighters in Iowa, where the National Weather Service is predicting a very rare snowfall through Tuesday night, potentially dropping up to two inches an hour in some spots. 
Road crews working to keep up with heavy snow and ice in California and Nevada, bringing traffic to a grinding halt in some places. We had a couple of jackknife big rigs, um, some spin outs, several spin outs, and some vehicles that just uh, can't get any traction. Turning major highways into a perilous place to be. I was coming down the exit and my car wouldn't stop. I was on the brakes, so I almost hit the back of her car. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was scary. And this is the first of it, so it's probably not the worst of it yet. It's just going to get worse. A second storm is now forecast to hit the Sierra Nevada, where the mountain crests are expected to see 60 to 100 inches of snow by Friday morning. Now, after digging out of the first storm, Arizona could be dealing with more than 20 inches of snowfall in some areas. I'm looking forward to it. I'm Daryl Forges reporting. It's sure pretty till you have to shovel it or drive in it. Uh, that's what I hear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 542, 49 degrees. Still ahead, if you're looking to jumpstart your exercise routine, why getting a mini trampoline may be a good decision. 545, welcome back to GMSA. Our city's more than 300 year history is filled with people and moments that have helped bring us to where we are today. But for a long time, much of that history has not been taught. In this week's episode of KSET Explains, we try to uncover some of San Antonio's hidden black history. Our Myra Arthur gives us a preview. We're all familiar with the names Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Parks, and most of us learned at least the basics of the civil rights movement in the 1960s. But there was a treasure trove of little known black history right here in San Antonio. In our history books, it didn't tell you about all the wonderful things that black people did. It talked to you about enslavement. And it talked to you about the fact that black people are typically good at sports. Well, you know, there's a lot more to African-American and Hispanic-American history than just those two things. From the arrival of the Canary Islanders in what is now San Antonio to the woman who helped establish a historically black college on the east side, the success stories are hidden right in plain sight. What I've learned is when students do not see themselves in the curriculum, they are not engaged. If you're not teaching the importance um, of African-American contributions, Hispanic contributions as well, women contributions as well, to the general audience of public school students and university students, then you're not giving them uh, a range uh, of dignity that should be afforded to all of humanity. In this week's episode of KSAT Explains, we're taking a look at some of the most fascinating little known pieces of San Antonio's black history, the importance of shining a light on it, and examining how the Black Lives Matter movement fits into the long fight for equality. KSAT Explains San Antonio's hidden black history will be available to stream on demand this Thursday on our website. Just go to KSAT.com slash explains. You can also catch it on the KSAT TV app on Roku, Fire Stick and most other streaming devices. City of San Antonio is seeing positive results behind its Train for Jobs SA program. It helps residents who lost their jobs due to the pandemic train them for other careers. Several nonprofits are helping with the transition. Our Jaffany Gray spoke with the executive director of the nonprofit Restore Education and the graduation they held this past weekend. You can watch the story online right now at ksat.com. Are you looking for ways to jumpstart your workout routine for 2021? Our Sarah Costa tells us how many trampolines can take your health and fitness to new heights. With gyms closed or at limited capacity due to the pandemic, people wanting to exercise have been looking for creative ways to keep up a routine at home. Well, have you ever considered buying a trampoline? Here are some reasons why you may want to. Here are five benefits of having a mini trampoline and doing what's called rebounding exercises on them, according to Vogue. One, it provides a good cardiovascular workout. A study by NASA's Journal of Applied Physiology found that rebounding is 68% more effective than jogging. It gets the heart going in a good way. Number two, it's easier on the joints and helps absorb the shock on feet as opposed to running on hard surfaces. Three, rebounding helps flush out the body by stimulating the lymphatic system. That's a network of tissues and organs that helps get rid of unwanted waste, which strengthens the immune system. Number four, it helps tone multiple parts of the body. And five, spending time on a trampoline helps with your motor skills, improving balance, coordination, and agility. Spending time bouncing around on a mini trampoline can also boost your mood and help with anxiety. Back to you guys.
I have to agree yeah? with Sarah's report. Yeah, so we don't have one, but my sister-in-law has one. And of course, you know, Rooney was like, come come jump with me, Mom. I'm like, sure. You know, I was like, oh my goodness, that is a workout. It, it is a workout. Some of the best viral videos out there, trampolines, are with kids and dogs. Aww. It's hilarious. <laughs> hilarious <laughs> stuff. Cute. 549, Samuel, how is the morning commute looking? Uh, Let's get the latest. Yes, things uh, looking uh, okay. Nothing to uh, uh, jump up and down about. Well, maybe you should because <laughs> maybe you should because a lot of green uh, on the map. Let's take a look at a couple parts of town. If you're on 35 heading uh, downtown between downtown and 410, 10 minutes each way uh, north of downtown. And then if you're heading in from the south, also 10 minutes each way. So that looks good. And then uh, looking at uh, Fredericksburg Road around the medical center area, 14, 13 minutes uh, each uh, way there between Woodlawn and Ebner. So that looks good too. And here's a look at uh, Transguide uh, 35 at uh, Judson and 90 at uh, 35. Some activity there. Traffic starting to build. But again, at the moment, you have plenty of time to do what you need to do, guys. All right. And Mike, last half hour, you have that big white bird out of the mm -hmm. zoo. A friend of mine said your guys, your, your guess was essentially right that he said it was a white egret. Oh, very okay. good. Mm -hmm. See, we're doing okay. For mm -hmm. our guesses. Yeah. I think so. And another beautiful shot of Woodlawn yeah, Lake. Yeah. Another fantastic one. Everybody was out enjoying the beautiful weather yesterday. And look at the reflection off that. It almost looks like a, uh, a painting out there. So many great views from Woodlawn Lake. And you know, there's the beautiful view you can look at toward downtown, depending on which direction. So it's a little hidden gem out there. Go explore it. Another great day to be outside and enjoy. And uh, we see them. Nope, it looks like the moon has finally set. No problems on the roads out there. We're looking out past the airport right now. Yesterday, it did make it up to 77 degrees. And then at 80, Catula, 79 in New Braunfels. Today, we're going to be right up in that neighborhood again, mid-70s. But uh, obviously, the difference being uh, much, much cooler start this morning. Yesterday, of course, we cooled down into about the 60 degree range once that front moved through and then got up to 77. And that was with the help of some dry air. Now the very dry air is in place and so that doesn't hold the heat in as well and it heats up very quickly. So we'll go from the mid 40s up to the mid 70s later on today. The dew point temperatures measure moisture in the atmosphere. This is how you factor in relative humidity. They're very low today and they're going to try to come back up in the evening hours. However, another front kind of a reinforcing push of drier air and somewhat cooler air is going to work its way in here overnight into tomorrow. So it's not an Arctic blast. We don't see any of those in our future, but at least this is going to kind of push temperatures back down to normal readings instead of being mid 70s will be mid 60s tomorrow. But then we get a little extra surge of cooler air coming in here Thursday, and so that's going to hold us only in roughly the mid to upper 50s. Now will be a cold day, but it's not going to last more than a day, then it's back up to the 60s, then back up into the 70s. So it's kind of a, uh, a reflection of the first part of the week in the end of the week. Uh, got negative numbers up there to the north, brutally cold air, obviously, but all that will be staying well up there to the north of us. And like I said, we're not going to be seeing any taste of anything just outrageously cold in well the rest of this week or even going into first part of next week, maybe by first weekend of February, but obviously that's still a long way off. 70 today at noon, mostly sunny skies and a high temperature up to 75. So we're going to be about 10 degrees above normal, kind of like where we were yesterday. And then tomorrow, cool start and uh, 65 degrees. So nice, pleasant afternoon. A couple of extra clouds around here. Then 58 on Thursday. That's the cold day of the week. Then we go just the opposite direction. 67 on Friday, back up mid 70s, and another little bit of a front moves through just to kind of keep things in check Sunday and Monday. Don't know about you guys, but I'm looking for another killing frost to get rid of the weeds that have started to pop up in the last few weeks. That would be nice. There, like I said, right now, even long range, nothing really too awfully cold and sliding in our direction. We still have February to go, but. Okay. Bye. Bye, weed killer. Weed killer. You yes. read my mind. No, I'll pull, I pulled as many as I could. I look at the weeds as at least they're green. Right? That's dirt. true. So, hey. Hey, for some people, that's a front yard right there. <laughs> 553, 49 degrees. And let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, zero, seven, two, fireball four, daily four, eight, four, four, two, fireball three. Cash five, eight, 21, 27, 30, 33, Texas two step, four, 20, 24, 29, bonus ball 27. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, we'll have the very latest on the impeachment showdown. 
and overnight House members delivering the official article against former President Trump to the Senate. Now, what's next? How soon will the trial start and what President Biden is saying about it all this morning? That plus much more coming up on GMA. We'll see you all soon. The pandemic has had a substantial impact on all of us. So KSAT community will be hosting a special virtual mental health town hall. That's tomorrow, finally. It'll include three panelists answering your questions. The town hall will be live streamed on KSAT.com starting at 2 p.m. For more information, go to KSATcommunity.com. Still to come on GMSA, people all across the country are having to deal with stress of the past year different ways. Just ahead, we take a look at how Texas stacks up when it comes to the most stressed out states in the union. And Samuel's here to cut down on commuter stress. He'll have an update on TransGuide and steer you clear of any traffic trouble spots. Mike will also be back with your Tuesday forecast. Police say a man's on the run. Another is in critical condition at a hospital after a shooting on the city's southwest side. We'll see what police say led up to shots being fired. And a cold start to your morning. We're looking at 49 degrees for now, but we're going to see some sunshine. We're going to talk to Mike all about that sun coming up today. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is January 26th. Thanks for waking up with us today. I hope you had a great day yesterday, and it looks like we might have another great day today. Yeah, no doubt about that. A little technical glitch this morning. That says 49, but Mike says we're actually around 47 right now. Oh. Yeah, and temperatures will continue to uh, drop down. I'm going to click the button in a second and see what the uh, updated uh, reading is, but we've got a lot of clear skies out there, and yes, it is going to be another fantastic day, and we're going to see no more uh, just very spring-like conditions out there. 47, so we're still holding a steady. 36 in Kerrville, 37 in Fredericksburg, Rock Springs at 46 degrees. There's a little bit of a wind chill, not much, but uh, just enough to make it feel like 43 here in town, 42 at Randolph, and it's just those 30s out in portions of the hill country, so a slight breeze out there. Mold really shot up yesterday, 11,500. Hopefully with the drier air in place, that's going to be going down. Of course, the update account will come out in about an hour and a half or so. And Mountain Cedar was still on the high side yesterday. It will be interesting also to see what that count is, given the fact we had those breezy conditions yesterday. As far as the uh, temperatures this morning, I think uh, when it's all said, then we dip down about uh, mid, even some lower 40s here in town, a couple of more degrees, and then nice warm up, especially between now and noon. Temperatures are just going to be going up by leaps and bounds. We'll make it up to 70 already at noon, and then we will top off at 75 later on today. And again, plenty of sunshine out there. Really, really nice day. We do have another front moving on through late tonight, so that'll just kind of knock temperatures down a little bit the next couple of days. Won't last very long, though. Closer look at the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, and again, I don't want to jinx it, but there hasn't been much going on this morning. Well, we do have one oh. crash. It's not okay. showing up on here, Mike. So he spoke too soon. Yeah, spoke to us a little too soon, but, but, but that's okay. It's still relatively quiet, except for uh, this newly uh, reported crash. This is uh, just north of the form, uh, 35 and Evans Road. But you can see on 35 right now, really not uh, impacting uh, things too much. So that is uh, the good thing. So let's look, take a look at some travel times in from New Braunfels on 35, 26 minutes. Uh, about a half an hour on I-10 from Seguin, uh, 16 minutes on 35 from Lytle. And let's take a look at Transguide, I-10 at Dwy, looking uh, fine this morning as well, guys. A developing story this morning, San Antonio police looking for a shooter that sent one man to the hospital. Police say they got a call around 3.30 this morning in the 800 block of Darby. That's near Highway 90 and General Hudnell. They say two men got into an argument at an apartment at the Darby Square Apartments. That's when police say one of the men pulled out a gun and shot the victim twice. Shooter ran off and the victim was taken to a hospital. Katrina Weber will have an update coming up in our next half hour. A 15 year old boy has died after he was shot at a home on the city's west side last night. It happened in the 500 block of Bell Cross near Commerce and Acme. Our Sarah Costa is live in Studio B. Now, Sarah, at this time, police know who the shooter is, but it's not clear if he will face charges. 
Good morning, Stephanie. That's right. Police are trying to figure out why the 15 year old was shot by a 19 year old at that West Side home. Originally, San Antonio police say they were called out to a robbery at the home on Bell Cross, but they are unsure if the incident was a robbery at all. According to police, a 19 year old who lives at the house says the 15 year old he shot was trying to rob him. Witnesses say they heard two gunshots come from the home's front yard. To make things more complicated for police, the parents of the 19 year old are refusing to cooperate with them. Investigators are now seeking a search warrant to enter the home. Police say they hope video surveillance from the home will help solve their case. The 19 year old says he did not know the teen before the shooting. Originally, the 15 year old was transported to the hospital overnight in critical condition. However, he has died at the hospital early this morning from those injuries. Mark. Crime Stoppers asking for your help finding the suspects involved in a robbery on the south side. Please say these two people walked into a cricket wireless at 1604 and Highway 281 last Tuesday. Said the suspects threatened an employee with a handgun and stole several things from the store. And they drove off in a red car. And Crime Stoppers also looking for suspects in a murder investigation. San Antonio police say two men may have killed 24-year-old Kenneth King at the Budget Lodge on I-35 back in January of 2017. He was found in a motel room with a gunshot wound and later died at Bamsey. If you have any information on either of these cases, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number, 210-224-STOP. A San Antonio man seen amid the chaos at the Capitol is scheduled to make a second court appearance today. Federal documents show Matthew Mazzocco was identified at the Capitol after a call came into the FBI a day later. This Facebook post one piece of evidence in the hands of prosecutors. Picture has a caption, the Capitol is ours, end quote. Investigators say someone called the FBI after seeing this picture. Mazzocco faces several charges, including violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds. He is currently out on bond. The pandemic, local health officials are reporting 2,082 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. 13 more people have died due to complications from the virus. The seven-day moving average is now just above 1,700 cases a day. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the positivity rate has dropped again this week, but it still remains at 15%. He says many risk indicators have either stabilized or improved for the first time in weeks, but the risk level for San Antonio is still severe. And this morning, there are growing concerns about mutations of the coronavirus. A new variant has been found up in Minnesota. It comes as President Joe Biden warns we could see 660,000 deaths in this country before we, quote, turn the corner. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. This morning, another mysterious variant of the coronavirus has arrived in the U.S. A mutation first discovered in Brazil has now been detected in Minnesota. The state health department says the case involves a resident with recent travel history to Brazil. Viruses change. That's that's what's known about viruses. That it's mutating is, is nothing new to science and nothing new to us. Doctors say the coronavirus has mutated thousands of times, but three variants are being closely watched. The Brazilian variant found in Minnesota is said to be more contagious than the more common strains, and a variant that originated in England now spreading in at least 26 states. Officials warn that strain could also be more deadly. They became convinced that it is in fact uh, a bit more uh, virulent, namely make, making it more difficult when you get to the point of serious disease and even death. Doctors say the vaccines do work against the variants, but they're also tracking a mutation from South Africa that could be tougher for Moderna vaccines to fight. So the company is working on a booster shot as a precaution. The South African variant has not been detected in the U.S., but the Biden administration is now banning non-citizens traveling from that country. In addition to Brazil, England, Ireland, and 26 countries across Europe. And beginning today, a negative COVID test or proof of recovery from the virus will be required for all air travelers arriving in the U.S. In the meantime, the race to vaccinate Americans is still inching along. President Biden is now aiming to ramp up to 1.5 million doses per day, and he's hoping for widespread vaccinations by spring. But one of his top advisors says we may not see that until the fall. I think this is going to take us uh, into the fall. We got to get there before next spring. Uh, winter. The Biden administration invoked the Defense Production Act to expand vaccine production. But this morning, the largest maker of syringes says it doesn't have the capacity to increase supplies. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Well, if you woke up this morning wondering what the score of the Spurs game was last night, 
We don't have one. The NBA postponed last night's game between the Spurs and Pelicans due to COVID-19 protocols. The league made the announcement less than two hours before tip-off. The NBA says both teams did not have the required eight eligible players after contact tracing. No further info or makeup dates been released at this time. It is the first Spurs game that's been postponed this season. At this time, next Spurs game scheduled for tomorrow night. Boston Celtics are scheduled to play at the AT&T Center 730 tomorrow night. Be sure to download the KSAT app for the latest information on the game. And if there are any other delays, we hope not. Hope not. And it's a case of short-term pain for long-term gain. A flood control project in one San Antonio neighborhood is causing some major detours. McCullough Avenue closed between Oblate and Sharon Lee. Your traffic authority, Samuel King, joining us back now. Live with more on this story. Samuel, how many weeks are we talking here? Uh, we're looking at uh, several uh, weeks. In fact, it's actually a pretty extensive project with the goal of reducing some major flood issues in that neighborhood. Now, crews have started work on phase two of the Barber Drive drainage project about three weeks ago. They have to open up the ground and dig and replace uh, storm drain boxes. So that will add capacity for better drainage. As many people know, this area has flooded pretty severely over the years, so city officials say it takes a pretty large project to make things better. At the same time, they understand it can be pretty disruptive. We understand that people are frustrated, uh, and uh, but we thank them for their patience. And uh, what I'll tell you is that when this is done, that, that drainage system is going to be very good, and the residents of that area will be happy because they won't have the problems they had in the past because of flooding. Barry says they do plan to make changes to the detour already, ending it at Sharon Drive eventually instead of Shannon Lee Street. Work is paid for from proceeds from the 2017 bond. This project itself runs about $8 million. Now it is expected to run through the spring, and while there may be some extra cleanup work, officials don't expect any more major detours or closures after that. Mark, Stephanie? Well, at least there won't be any more closures. Thank you, Samuel. Right now, 610, we are at 47 degrees. And Twitter making some changes in its fight against misinformation. See how the company is putting regular users to work. Past year been, has put, uh, put an unbelievable amount of stress on schools. After the break, we'll see how Pre-K for SA is pushing to get back to full enrollment. And taking a look outside with live cam, it definitely feels like January right now in the 40s. Uh, but will it later on? We're going to check in with Mike about all that sunshine we should expect today. Just about 615, the sales tax funded program Pre-K for SA says it is gearing up to begin enrollment in early February. But the CEO of the program says there's been a drop in the number of families who are sending kids to preschool because of the pandemic. There has been a 30% decline in preschool enrollment nationwide, which is similar to what's been seen in programs across San Antonio, she says. She's optimistic that as more people get the vaccine, there will be more confidence in sending kids back to school. Now, to comply with social distancing, Pre-K for SA cut an enrollment, its enrollment in half last year, but it'll be back to full enrollment of 2,000 kids next August, both in person and with remote learning. Every day of pre-K matters because young children's brains are developing rapidly, that the brains of young children are developing a million neural connections a second, which means not just every day, but every minute counts. She says the kids who skipped out on pre-K this year will need extra support when they start kinder next year. You can find out how to enroll your child on KSET.com. I see a couple things on the map, but let's get the details right now from Samuel King. Hey, good morning, guys. We do have a, a new uh, newly reported crash here now it's showing up on our map, so that's good. This is on 35, uh, just north of uh, the form at uh, Evans. So you see, forgive the double there, but you get the idea. Uh, but the good thing is you can see the traffic flow in both directions, 67 miles per hour. Crews are still on the scene uh, of that crash, but it does not look like it's really affecting 35 itself. So taking a look, if you're coming in uh, from New Braunfels, still about 26 minutes minutes right now into downtown San Antonio. So we'll see uh, if that does continue and taking a look at Transguide uh, 37 uh, looking fine uh, and as 281 at the quarry uh, looking fine as well, folks. I like the uh, the 3D maps, especially as we transition to Transguide. It's kind of seamless, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like, whoosh. yep, 
It is. And <laughs> it, it, it sounds like that when we toss to you. Yeah, that's true. It's like, shh, shh. It's almost like the sound effects from the Indy 500, you know, when the yeah. cars are going by. <laughs> 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 Just thought I'd throw that one out there. Anyway, uh, hey, I uh, might want to warm up your car a little bit this morning. It's not brutally cold out there, but just chilly enough. And then it's one of those make sure kids have name in a coat today because you need a jacket this morning. It is kind of chilly out there. And I think we uh, will continue to drop down a few more degrees in the next couple of hours. Going to be a beautiful sunrise and then very warm this afternoon. Obviously, no coats this afternoon. We gain about 30 degrees from the low to the uh, high. I love this picture. That nice little peaceful, makes you kind of want to whisper, a little peaceful path winding through the trees right there. Hear the birds chirping in the background. That was to cue your sound effects there. Oh, oh, you want a sound effects? I don't know, cause I, you sounded like you were working on poetry. We were, we were just listening. I was waiting for the bird chirping. Never mind. That was Samuel. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that was your bird <laughs> chirp? Well, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He'll be here all week, folks. Try anyway. <laughs> anyway, we've got uh, lots of clear skies out there, and we're not seeing any uh, glow of the sunrise as of yet. Uh, the humidity is very low, and so that's why it allows temperatures to cool down. And then we have the big, big warm up because dry air it doesn't hold the heat in as well, and it doesn't take as much energy to uh, heat it up. Now, as the humidity wants to kind of come back in here tonight. Then we get another front to move through here later on this evening. And so what that's going to do is actually knock us back down to normal. Of course, we had the front move through yesterday, got up into the mid upper 70s, mid 70s again today. But this one is going to have a little shot of some uh, cooler air with it. So that puts us back down to the 60s, mid 60s tomorrow, about a normal high temperature. And then we get another kind of shove of cooler air coming in here Thursday. And so that's going to keep us only in the uh, mid to upper 50s for a high temperature on Thursday. Uh, nothing is showing up on the satellite picture right now. There may be one or two clouds out there. Big system off to the southwest of us is not going to have really any effect on us, uh, kind of helping to pull some of this cooler air in here throwing that front through but we're not going to see any precipitation from that if you got any travel plans going through uh, Chicago Detroit or off to the northeast big storm out there and then of course they had that uh, tornado the severe weather same front that moved through here yesterday produced that tornado up around Birmingham Alabama yesterday brutally cold temperatures right there along the US Canadian border uh, then that's going to be staying up there so we've got and even obviously colder air we weren't really seeing a lot of just Arctic Arctic air in Canada a couple of weeks ago, but it's obviously some very cold temperatures 26 below there at Winnipeg, but that all stays right there in the northern tier of the United States and really doesn't come in to us. There's that pocket of cold air up there. And again, that just grazes by the uh, the Great Lakes for us. Here's the front that moves through later on tonight. A little glitch in the atmosphere doesn't do anything as far as any uh, any precipitation at all. So that cools us down for Thursday. Warm back up Friday into the weekend. We have another little front that moves through and that's going to be um, late Saturday into Sunday. Just kind of shaves temperatures off a little bit. Nothing too extreme. And again, all that really cold stuff stays up there in Canada. And that's going to be the case going into the first part of next week. Just those little tiny Basically, um, fronts that, that get, rid, get rid of some of the humidity and allow things to uh, kind of cool down a little bit. But perhaps by next weekend, week from uh, the first weekend of February, we'll get another shot of cooler air. But it's kind of, uh, you know, two weeks away speculation right now. 70 today at noon, mostly sunny skies. 75 for high temperature today. So jacket this morning, not this afternoon. And then we get that front move through tonight, and that's going to cool us down. A little bit tomorrow, 65 degrees, right around normal, and then another kind of shove of cooler air. So that puts us down to 38 Thursday morning and only 58 for a high temperature. Then the weekend, back up into the 70s. Nice looking weekend. So get out, enjoy those nice little walks, and listen to the the birds out there. Chirping. The birds chirping. Samuel. Sam, there you go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Sam, we're going to have a, a chat during the commercial. Yeah, we're going to um, work on all our sound Give you effects. some more options. 621, 48 degrees. <laughs> and coming up, a teenager in Texas is talking about why he turned in his father to the FBI for taking part in the deadly riot on Capitol Hill. Find out more in today's GMA First Look.
Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Okay, everyone. Our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Great tasting and sure. With 9 grams of protein, 27 vitamins and minerals, and nutrients to support immune health. Millions are saying yes to Allegra, the number one allergist-recommended non-drowsy brand. Allegra works two times faster than Claritin, and unlike Zyrtec, it's non-drowsy. Say yes to the fastest non-drowsy 24-hour relief, Allegra. What's inside Airborne? A blast of immune support that's more than just vitamin C. It's a unique crafted blend of vitamins, minerals, and herbs. It's what makes Airborne your daily dose of confidence. Find our coupon in Sunday's paper. How did Kellogg's combine crunchy oak clusters with a touch of honey, plump, juicy raisins, and tasty fiber into one delicious cereal? It took a lot of brand storming. Get it? Kellogg's Raisin Bran Crunch. Two scoops of delicious. In this morning's GMA First Look, a family divided over the January 6th Capitol riot. It's all over the news. You could see him, his blue coat, his helmet. This man is Guy Raffitt, caught on camera taking part in the siege against the Capitol. His son, 18-year-old Jackson Raffitt, says he was getting real-time updates from his dad during the insurrection. And this morning on GMA, ABC's TJ Holmes goes one-on-one -on -one with Jackson Raffitt. So why, why be public about it? I want people to know how awful this political strain can be on certain people. It can manipulate and warp and change a person's thoughts. Over a course of two years, it can twist a whole family to being completely against each other. We'll have much more on that interview, plus the latest on the investigation like into Raffitt's father, coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Hey, listen to this. Twitter has unveiled a new plan to stop the spread of misinformation. The pilot program is called Birdwatch and relies on select users to flag and add notes to any tweets deemed false or misleading. Twitter says fact checkers will be experts and non-experts. Instagram has a new feature for businesses and creators. The app's business tools are now centralized with the professional dashboard. It allows businesses to track their ads and set up shopping features in one place. And the magic of Harry Potter may be streaming soon. A live action series about the boy wizard is reportedly in the works for HBO Max. Eight Potter films were released between 2001 and 2011. However, officials with HBO Max and Warner Brothers have not yet confirmed any reports about a future project. Hmm, not confirmed, but it would be successful. I would do awesome. And again, add to HBO Max's uh, plethora of content. I know. I'm excited to see. I forgot the name of the new one with Denzel Washington that's coming out this week. At the oh, end of this Rami week. Malek. Yes. Uh, Denzel Washington. Uh, it, we're gonna we're, we're gonna fill you we're in. gonna we're gonna Google it. We just it's rude if we do it on air. Uh, Six twenty seven forty eight degrees. U.S. senators are expected to be sworn in as jurors for the impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump today. We will hear from some of the lawmakers involved in the trial. Police say it started with angry words and ended with gunfire. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They're investigating that shooting, which happened overnight at these apartments here on the west side. I'll tell you more about it. The next step in a historic Senate impeachment trial begins today. I'm Alex Brache in Washington. I'll have details coming up. Outside with live cam. 47 degrees at San Antonio International Airport, so it's crisp once again this morning. Cool morning, and Mike says maybe a hot day. Hi, good morning. It is Tuesday, January 26th. Yeah, grab the coat now and then lose it later. I'm, I'm looking at Mike for kind of verification of our premise here. Yes. Well, I guess it depends on your, your definition of hot. I mean, for some people, 75 degrees. And it is on the hot side compared to normal 30-year average, which is right around uh, 63, 64 this time of year. So we will be about 10 degrees above normal. And we're not seeing the glow of the sunrise yet. So 47, as we mentioned, and the wind, a little bit of a breeze out of the uh, northwest at 8 miles per hour. Very, very dry air. So the dry air heats up very quickly. Wind chill temperatures, a 
slight breeze out there, so it feels like 43 out at the airport, 41 at Port SA as of right now. And it's going to be interesting to see what the updated allergen pollen count comes out uh, about another hour or so, because mold was very high yesterday. Hopefully that goes down with the drier air, but Mountain Cedar, of course, we had breezing conditions yesterday, so that may be getting another uh, another good shake of those trees out there. Sunny, warm and or hot later on, 75 degrees and then mostly sunny tomorrow, but not as warm. We'll be down to normal. We've got another front moving through tonight, and then that's going to knock us down even further with temperatures. And so it's going to be kind of chilly on Thursday, but it's going to warm back up into the 70s by the weekend. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King and... Well, trans guides looking okay. Yeah, things looking uh, pretty uh, good this morning. So for most of the area, you have plenty of time if you want to uh, uh, head out uh, this morning. Uh, we do have this uh, crash here. This is 35 just north of the forum at uh, Evans Road, but you can see uh, not really impacting the traffic flow too much because they do have it uh, on the side. It is affecting uh, one of the on ramps in this area. So if you normally drive in this area or get on 35 around here, that's something to uh, look out for. Traffic time coming in from New Braunfels on 35 is 26 minutes right now. It's also uh, that going the other way. 24 minutes on I-10 coming uh, from Bernie and 17 minutes on 35 uh, from Lytle. Guys, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. An argument between two men overnight has left one in the hospital and the other on the run. San Antonio police say one shot the other, and it happened at an apartment complex in the 800 block of Darby near Couples Road. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, Katrina, is there any update on the condition of the victim? Well, the only word that we had from police is that the man was in critical condition at the time of the shooting. They told us that he was shot in his leg and upper body, shot at least twice. The police found that man, they say, right outside a second floor unit here at the Darby Square Apartments. They say he's around 25 years old. They got the call around 3.30 this morning. Police say the two men had gotten into some sort of disagreement inside the apartment. Then it ended with the shooting right outside. Investigators spent about an hour here collecting evidence and talking to witnesses. The shooter already was gone when officers arrived. But police say that witnesses told them he took off with a woman in a gray BMW. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Police are hoping video surveillance will help them figure out why a 15-year-old was shot last night at a west side home. Police were called out to the 500 block of Bell Cross just after 7.30 last night. Sarah Costa is just down the hall in Studio B with more on this story. Sarah, police say it was originally a robbery they were called out for, a robbery? Yes, police originally thought it was a robbery, but when they got there, police found a 15-year-old that had been shot and was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. The medical examiner's office confirmed with us this morning the teen died early this morning from his injuries. So San Antonio police say they aren't even sure if this incident was a robbery at all, but it's the story the shooter has given police. According to police, a 19-year-old who lives at the house says the 15-year-old he shot was trying to rob him. Witnesses say they heard two gunshots come from the home's front yard. The parents of the 19-year-old are refusing to cooperate with police. Investigators are now seeking a search warrant to enter the home. Police say they do have video surveillance from the house and hope this will help them solve their case. The 19-year-old says he did not know the teen before the shooting. At this point, they are unsure if the shooter will face any charges related to the shooting. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Today, the U.S. Senate is moving forward with the next step in former President Donald Trump's second impeachment trial. Senators will be sworn in for the historic trial, the first of a former president in American history. ABC's Alex Perche has details. Good morning. With that article of impeachment sent over to the Senate yesterday, the clock is officially set. Senators will be sworn in as jurors today, and that trial is set to begin the week of February 8th. Overnight, a historic march across the Capitol. The House delivering the article of impeachment to the Senate. It triggers the start of the second impeachment trial. President Trump gravely endangered the security of the United States and its institutions of government. Lead House impeachment manager, Congressman Jamie Raskin, reading that single article of impeachment from the same chamber of violent mob storm nearly three weeks ago. 
charging Trump with incitement of insurrection and demanding that he be held accountable for his words. Fight like hell. Democrats plan to argue like this rally was part of a larger effort to subvert and obstruct the results of the 2020 election. He has not demonstrated remorse. He has not even acknowledged his role in the events of January 6th. Both sides will have two weeks to prepare their case. The trial begins the week of February 8th. And overnight, President Biden told CNN he believes the trial has to happen, but he casts doubt on whether Democrats will have the support of the minimum 17 Republicans needed to convict. To Senator convict. Tom Cotton telling Fox. This is beyond the constitutional authority of the Senate to conduct a trial to convict and remove from office a man who left office last week. The Constitution says the chief justice presides over the impeachment trial of a president. But since Donald Trump is no longer in office, Senator Patrick Leahy, the Senate's longest serving Democrat, will oversee the proceedings. He's promised to be impartial. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. In your morning headlines, Janet Yellen will be the first wo woman to serve as Secretary of the Treasury. 84 senators confirmed her nomination to the cabinet yesterday. Yellen says getting the nation through the pandemic takes precedence over addressing the deficit or any tax issues. The National Weather Service is surveying damage after a tornado touched down just north of Birmingham, Alabama. Local officials say there are reports of injuries, but they need to wait for more search and rescue reports to learn how many. So far, at least five people have been hospitalized. Significant damage to homes and other buildings was reported as well. The National Weather Service says it will be able to determine how strong the tornado was based on the damage. One year ago today, NBA star Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna and eight others died in a helicopter crash in California. The tragedy fell across the world, including here in San Antonio. Today, the Lakers have no plans for a tribute out of respect for Bryant's family. Meanwhile, the National Transportation Safety Board will release its final report on the crash on February 9th. Our city's more than 300-year history is filled with people and moments that have helped bring us to where we are today. But for a long time, much of that history has not been taught. This week's episode of Case That Explains will try to uncover some of San Antonio's hidden black history. Myra Arthur has a preview. We're all familiar with the names Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Parks, and most of us learned at least the basics of the civil rights movement in the 1960s. But there was a treasure trove of little known black history right here in San Antonio. In our history books, it didn't tell you about all the wonderful things that black people did. It talked to you about enslavement, and it talked to you about the fact that black people are typically good at sports. Well, you know, there's a lot more to African-American and Hispanic-American history than just those two things. From the arrival of the Canary Islanders in what is now San Antonio, to the woman who helped establish a historically black college on the east side, the success stories are hidden right in plain sight. What I've learned is when students do not see themselves in the curriculum, they are not engaged. If they're not teaching the importance um, of African-American contributions, Hispanic contributions as well, women contributions as well to the general audience of public school students and university students, then you're not giving them uh, a range uh, of dignity that should be afforded to all of humanity. In this week's episode of KSAT Explains, we're taking a look at some of the most fascinating little known pieces of San Antonio's black history, the importance of shining a light on it, and examining how the Black Lives Matter movement fits into the long fight for equality. And Case That Explains San Antonio's Hidden Black History will be available to stream on demand this Thursday on our website. Just go to kset.com slash explains. You can also catch it on the Case TV app on Roku, Fire Stick, and most other streaming devices. Right now it's just about 641. We're one degree cooler than it's showing there on our bug. It's 47. All right, 47 degrees for now. And people across the country have had to deal with the stress of the past year in different ways. Just ahead, we take a look at how Texas stacks up when it comes to the most stressed out states in the nation. A new one poll survey published and featured in the British news agency Southwest News Service shows just how Texas stacks up when it comes to stress. The poll sampled 12,500 Americans and found that Texas is tied for 13th place when it comes to time spent worrying per day due to stress. The results revealed 72% of Americans surveyed believe 2020 was the most stressful year they've lived through. The top state was Missouri, where people there spent more than three hours a day worrying about things. The survey shows that Americans are worried the most about what you would expect 
lack of finances, the current state of the nation, and either themselves or loved ones becoming sick with COVID-19. And many are dealing with that stress in different ways. According to the poll, many are turning to vitamins and supplements. 37% currently already take one, while another 23% would be interested. Doctors suggest that can be an option, but to also consider just taking time to unwind, meditate, and even exercise. The good news is, nearly half of the respondents say they have learned new ways to cope with managing stress and anxiety, and about 43% think they are better equipped to handle stressful situations. Some of the least stressed out states include Iowa, Nebraska, Minnesota, and Wyoming. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 6.45. We had one accident earlier, but let's go ahead and check your morning commute with Samuel King. And uh, Stephanie, we still uh, do have uh, that re reported crash. This is on I-35, just north of the Forum at uh, Evans uh, Road here. You can see only a slight uh, delay uh, heading uh, northbound down to 53 uh, miles per hour. So uh, that's looking fine as well. Uh, 21 minutes if you're coming into town on 90 from Casterville. Once you get inside Loop uh, 1604, it's 11 minutes each way. And here's a look at that at Transguide 90 at 35. Uh, traffic starting to uh, build just a, a little bit, but uh, still relatively good across the area, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Right. Many, yes, sir. Hang on. Before we talk about this picture, I got Sam. Are you an old, old movie buff? Uh, not really. Well, okay. Some of them. See if but... anybody. No. Okay. Beautiful picture of the moon, right? Because mm -hmm. it's going to be full on Thursday. Now the caption says, "Norma Desmond is jealous. Why the moon is ready for its close-up." Anyone? <laughs> Sunset Boulevard. Wow. Oh, oh, there, Sunset there Boulevard, go. and the actress was? <laughs> She's like, come on now. My, my story was that as a kid, you built the world's largest sling slingshot, and now we can see the effects on the moon for uh, yeah. sharp photographers and astronomers. I mean, you can see what happened. Yeah. Your slingshot worked. Flap. Gloria Swanson. Ah. Ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille? That line? Yeah. Okay, uh, sun's almost coming up here, yeah. and uh, <laughs> thank you for playing along, Jamie. You win the you win the grand prize. So uh, we've got a few clouds, maybe well off to the uh, east, and temperatures. Everybody is uh, uh, Hondo, Uvalde, Del Rio, Carrizo Springs, mid and some uh, upper 40s around there. And we've got a little bit of a uh, wind out of the north, so slight wind chill. We're at 47 right now. It feels like about uh, 44, 43 degrees. Not too awfully bad. Very dry air in place, and so that's going to be warming up. Very quickly, it doesn't take as much energy to uh, warm up dry air as it does moist air. And uh, as far as clouds the next couple of days, you know, there may be one or two of them out there. Uh, not any any big deal. We've got a couple of fronts or another front, I should say, with uh, sort of a, a secondary reinforcing shove of some cooler air. The front's coming through tonight, knock temperatures down tomorrow and then knock them down again on Thursday with a few clouds left over here. Then we start to warm back up going into Friday and Saturday and uh, we'll see more sunshine after some clouds early on in the morning on Saturday and then Sunday Saturday and both Sunday are back up into the 70s although another front's going to move through on Sunday or late Saturday and just kind of knock temperatures off a, a degree or two so here's a big system water vapor imagery you can see this big storm system off there to the southwest of us but notice how it is moving basically up to the well almost northeast or north northeast so it is going to avoid us it's what is going to help pull the latest front through here but again everything's coming through pretty much on the dry side and so that's why we're not going to see any precipitation for this and unfortunately there's no rain in the forecast right now for at least the next week and then some. So 70 today at noon, mostly sunny skies, very warm. We gain about 30 degrees on average around the area, getting up to 75 and plenty of sunshine. Then tomorrow it's back down to the mid 60s. It's another cool start and then chilly or cold on Thursday morning, 38 degrees, only 58. So yeah, it stays pretty chilly in the afternoon. We're going to make it up to 67 Friday, back to 75 on Saturday, so it's kind of a kind of a little V-shape here, temperatures next few days. All right, and uh, Mike's History of the Cinema continues, same class time throughout the week. <laughs> we'll be watching. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Mike. Dr. Osterhage. 649, 47 degrees. Lots of businesses like bars and movie theaters are dealing with financial implications from the pandemic, but not every industry is suffering. Tomorrow on GMSA, why the plastic surgery business is experiencing a so-called Zoom boom. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up as the sun is as well. You're watching GMSA.
Good morning. Coming up on GMA, we'll have the very latest on the impeachment showdown and overnight House members delivering the official article against former President Trump to the Senate. Now, what's next? How soon will the trial start and what President Biden is saying about it all this morning? That plus much more coming up on GMA. We'll see you all soon. Tempers flare between two men and it ends with one of them being shot. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber here in the 800 block of Darby. The police were called here around 3.30 this morning. They say that that dispute took place in the second floor unit here at the Darby Square Apartments. They got the call around 3.30 this morning. They say a man around 25 years old was shot in his leg and upper body. It happened during a dispute with another man. Police say it started in the apartment and then the shooting took place right outside. The man who was shot was in critical condition as he was rushed to a hospital. Police are still searching for the shooter who they were told took off in a gray BMW with a woman. Reporting from the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police say a 15 year old has died after a shooting on the west side. Police were called out to a robbery at a home in the 500 block of Bellcross, but they're unsure if the incident was a robbery at all. According to police, a 19 year old who lives at the house says the 15 year old uh, he shot was trying to rob him. Witnesses say they heard two gunshots come from the home's front yard. The parents of the 19 year old are refusing to cooperate with police. Investigators now seeking a search warrant to enter the home. The 19 year old says he did not know the team before the shooting. At this point, they're unsure if the shooter will face any charges related to the shooting. And time now is 655. Let's take one last look at your morning commute with Samuel King. And Stephanie and Mark, things picking up on the roads. We still have uh, this crash here at uh, 35 and Evans Road. And you can see the delay northbound starting to build down to 33 uh, miles per hour there. But the travel time between uh, 35 and 410 from New Braunfels still looks pretty good. 20 minutes if you're heading uh, northbound. Also have a bit of a slowdown here at 410 at I-10 down to 31 miles per hour at that interchange. And here's a look at Trans Guide. As we mentioned, things starting to pick up, Mike. Yeah, sun is uh, thinking about coming up right now. You can see skies lightening up. A few clouds well off there to the east. We're at 48 degrees right now, and still got some 30s in parts of the hill country. A little bit of a uh, breeze out there, so adds kind of a little nip to some of these temperatures. Jacket this morning, you won't need it by this afternoon. Kind of like yesterday, we get up into the mid 70s, about 10 degrees above normal, and then we do have another front moving through tonight, so that'll knock us back to normal tomorrow, mid 60s, and then a reinforcing cool shot of air comes in Thursday. Only upper 50s, then reverse that. 60s on Friday, 70s over the weekend, and unfortunately no rain in sight. No rain. Nope. All right. We'll be prepared though. Thank you, Mike. And thanks for joining us today. See you back here at 9. Good Morning America is next.